Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 4. Why does ozone hole form over Antarctica? How will enhanced ultraviolet radiation affect us? So let's look at question number 4. So why does ozone hole form over Antarctica? How will enhanced ultraviolet radiation affect us? Now, ozone hole, why is it caused? It is caused due to the depletion of ozone layer. When the amount of ozone tend to decrease, that creates a hole in the ozone layer. Now, why it occurs in Antarctica is due to the high concentration of chlorine over there. Now, as we have seen that one chlorine molecule is capable of destroying one lakh molecules of ozone. So therefore if you have abundance of chlorine in any location, so it is quite obvious that ozone hole will form there. How will enhanced ultraviolet radiation affect us? Well, ultraviolet radiation has a lot of harmful effects. So when the ozone hole occurs, it exposes the earth's surface to more and more ultraviolet radiations. And these ultraviolet radiations can cause skin cancer, breast cancer, it can damage the immune system, it can cause slow blindness, it can damage plants. So these are some of the extremely harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. Question number five. Discuss briefly the following. Radioactive wastes. So what are radioactive wastes? Those wastes which contain radioactive material. So from where do we get maximum radioactive wastes? Yes, from the nuclear power plants. Now these nuclear power plants use radioactive material that they so these nuclear power plants, they use uranium as the main fuel and uranium being radioactive in nature, radioactivity is seen there. So as a result, we get radioactive wastes out of nuclear power plants. We also get it from hospitals where uh, radioisotopes are used in several diagnostic purposes and also in industry. So these are some of the sources from where we get radioactive wastes. Harmful effects of radioactive wastes. Radioactive wastes can become harmful even in low concentration. Low concentration can cause deadly diseases like cancer and if it is present in high concentration, it can definitely lead to death. Now since radioactivity is a process which lasts over a long period of time, so if you look at any of the elements which are radioactive in nature, they have a very high or a very uh, long half-life. So their radioactivity remains for a lot of a, a long number of years. As a result, the radioactive wastes not only pose a threat to the current generation but also to the future generations. How can we control radioactive wastes? By proper disposal of nuclear wastes, by without constructing any further nuclear power plant as long as we do not have a proper method of handling the radioactive wastes or for proper disposal of radioactive wastes. Uh, radioactive waste should be treated properly that is more toxic substances should be converted to less toxic ones before it is stored because sometimes stored radioactive wastes can also emit harmful radiations. Next is defunct ships and e-wastes. Now what are defunct ships? These are dead ships which are not in use. Now what, how do they contribute to environment pollution? They add to solid waste because a dead ship is like it is of no use but still you have the several parts of the ship, you have metals and so many other toxic substances like lead and mercury. So all these substances are some, some way or the other being added to the environment. So we are adding on to the pollution and you are also adding on to the solid wastes. If you talk about e-wastes, they are electronic wastes. It, it uh, consists of the broken computers, broken mobile phones, all sort of electronic goods. So they also contribute to toxic metals because most of the electronic goods contain a lot of metals like silicon, iron, copper, etc. Question number six. What initiatives were taken for reducing ventricular air pollution in Delhi? Has air quality improved in Delhi? Well, quite a few steps were taken in Delhi because the pollution had increased too much. It had become so much that uh, it was found that people started suffering from several breathing problems. So CNG was introduced for all public transport vehicles somewhere around 2002. Uh, it was 
it was made a rule that all the public transport vehicles including the buses and the autos they need to be converted from petrol or diesel into cng that's because cng is a more efficient fuel it leaves less residue after being burnt therefore it causes less pollution it is also cost effective so because of all these advantages cng was preferred over petrol or diesel introduced petrol without lead now if lead is present in petrol first of all lead itself is harmful secondly if lead is present in petrol it uh, inhibits or it stops it, it inactivates the action of the catalyst therefore the catalytic converter is also not able to perform its job as a result the smoke uh, which comes out of the automobiles they contain a lot of poisonous gases so that means petrol with lead is extremely harmful so delhi introduced petrol without lead introduced petrol or diesel with low sulfur content because even sulfur is something which is hazardous for health introduced catalytic converters now we have already learned about catalytic converters they have certain elements like palladium platinum which act as catalyst and they convert more toxic gases like carbon monoxide into less toxic gases like carbon oxide so uh, these kind of catalytic converters can do their job only in absence of lead therefore petrol has to be lead free and then catalytic converters can do their job and therefore emission from vehicles can become less poisonous so these were some of the steps which were taken in delhi to improve uh, the vehicular air pollution and yes the air quality did improve in delhi so all these uh, efforts or all these steps were beneficial in terms of reducing air pollution so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this lesson on environmental issues would have helped you and all i would like you to do is just do not learn all these things but also try to implement them so that we all can contribute at least something from our end to help our environment to save our environment so see you all in the next lesson Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.